Serious. People who have lived in a supposedly haunted house. What was your scariest supernatural encounter? What was it like? Part 2. I lived in a house that was built in the 1950s and didn't seem to be very updated. The house I don't think was haunted, but the detached garage sure as hell was. My buddy and I had a gaming setup out there. Keep in mind this garage is super messy. We had a couch and a TV with my PS2 in the middle of the mess. One night, while we were playing games, I heard a woman talking and her three kids running around laughing at 3am. I looked over at my friend and he was like, what the F was that? We both just kind of convinced ourselves that it must have been from the game, so we continued to play. Pretty soon we heard it again, so I paused the game and we both listened, didn't hear anything for a good two minutes. Sure enough, we hear the lady talking to her kids and all of them laughing again. We both freaked out because who in the world would be out at 3am next to our garage with their kids? So we both had to crawl over all the crap in the garage to see who it was. When we opened up the door, nobody was there. We both sprinted back inside the house and checked periodically for anyone outside. A couple of days or so go by. I was bored and my friend was busy at the time, so I decided to go out into my garage all by myself to play games. Sure enough, I hear the same thing again with the kids and the mom, but this time the door started shaking. I immediately froze. Then there was hard banging on the door. At this point, my body went into fight or flight mode. I always told myself that if I was ever caught in a supernatural situation, I wouldn't try to be sneaky. If this thing wants to kill me, it better do it right now. So I jumped out from the couch, leaped over all the crap in the garage and sprinted towards that door blasting through it. I sprinted towards the house without looking anywhere around me. When I made it through the door, I vouched to never go out into that garage again during late hours. Oh, and when I went inside, I realized I stepped on a nail. My adrenaline was pumping so hard, I didn't even feel it. All these events happened at my dad's house. He still lives there, bless him. I moved in while I was in my early to mid 20s. He was military and going to be gone for a year so I got a job up there and lived in his house, but moved up a few months before he left. At first, I really didn't have too many bad experiences. It was new construction, he was the first to live in it, we were in a subdivision, etc., so not the classic haunted house trope. Things started off super small and random, shit I could easily brush off, hearing knocks, seeing odd shadows here and there, all fully explainable. One time, the landline phone started beeping like someone had picked it up and started dialing, and when I walked over, the 6 button had randomly gotten stuck and was typing 666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666
Not much happened while she was there, but one day I had to go to work and left her. She slept in and woke up to a terrible storm, heavy rain, hail hitting the side of the house, etc. Not in any way terrifying, random storms were not all that uncommon where we were, and she didn't think about anything of it then other than the like recognizing the fact, ah, a storm, until she went downstairs, where I'd opened the sliding glass door curtain, and it was sunshiny and dry as a bone outside. No storm at all. Shit was weird, but we brushed it off as a dream or something. Things hit a turning point probably a month or so later. I was alone, late at night, upstairs in my bedroom. I always, always closed and locked my door because my logic was if someone does break in, that's one more obstacle for them to deal with while I call the cops, etc. Well, that night I hear footsteps in the hall again, except this time I'm upstairs with them, not downstairs. I legit just keep reading my book and refuse to acknowledge or check on it. It was that weird duality of, okay, this house is fucking haunted, and I've seen enough movies not to open the door, and ghosts don't exist, this is all bullshit, I'm a logical person, and will prove it by ignoring whatever that is to make my point. The noise continues, like someone is just pacing up and down the hallway over and over. Literally, this continued for over half an hour. I got super fucking frustrated and shouted out to shut up. Well, this pissed it off, because now it sounds like someone running up and down the hallway. I fucking freak. Start texting friends, I know are awake, turn on all the lights in my room, went from proper reading to fall asleep to adrenaline in high gear. It kept going and going and going. I was just fucking terrified and knew that there was no way in hell I was opening that fucking door. I stayed up as long as I could and eventually passed out. When I woke up at 5, the sounds were gone, but all my lights were on and I saw the texts on my phone, so I knew I hadn't dreamed it all up. Around 7.30, I have to leave my room and start getting ready for work. I go out and there's just nothing. Alarm still on, no sign of a break-in. If it was a raccoon or other animal that got in, there was no sign of it or any damage, just nothing. For what it's worth, someone did legitimately try and break into the house via the downstairs porch one night when I was watching TV. I wasn't half as terrified as I was the night this shit happened. Try to talk to my dad. He doesn't believe me at all, no surprise there. Nothing as big or as terrifying as that ever happened to me again while I was there and I lived there for almost another year. Still would hear the crashing the footsteps when we were downstairs, knocks, etc., but nothing like that, thank fuck. My dad thinks it's all lark, and for a while would regale dinner guests with my beliefs about the house being haunted. I moved out of state eventually, would keep in touch with my dad. On the phone sometimes he'd complain about weird shit happening in the house, crashes at night, but nothing fallen. One time he was in the shower and heard such a loud crash and felt the ground shake that he got out and grabbed his handgun and did a sweep of the house, convinced someone else was there, but there was no one and nothing out of place. Occasionally guys he knew would be stopping through and need a place to crash. One was Catholic and slept in the room that I used to have and said he had such a horrible, terrified feeling that he barely slept that night. Just something overwhelmingly bad. Dad thought he was fucking joking, but the dude ate breakfast and left pretty quickly and even when he'd come through town, he refused to stay at my dad's again. Another one was super logical dude, who I'm pretty sure was agnostic. He was with my dad downstairs when they heard a crash and my dad was just like, it's nothing, and kind of had to explain. Later that night, old boy heard some knocks, not enough to terrify him out of every staying again, but like two grown military guys who have both been in numerous combat zones telling my dad that something wasn't normal about his house seemed to at least convince him I wasn't making it up, lol. Two or three weeks ago, he called me on the phone, had me on speaker. He recently had his girlfriend and her daughter move in, and they were complaining to him about knocks and footsteps while he was at work. He tried to tell them the house is haunted, but they thought he was bullshitting them, so he called me to be his resident haunting verifier. Gotta love him. Might be late, but whatever. I was a baby at the time, so I don't remember this at all, but my family used to live in a house where apparently a, I think, seven-year-old boy died when he climbed up on a chair to grab something from the pantry but fell off and cracked his skull and died. When they moved in, they noticed that doors were being closed when left open and lights were being shut off when they were left on. So by this time, Casper was already a movie 
and they named our ghost appropriately, Casper, since he was friendly and a kid. My grandma said she would tell her nurse friends of the ghost and they wouldn't believe her. So she invited them over and purposely left the door open and light open. And when they woke up in the morning, the door was closed and the light was off. Couldn't be anyone else who did it or else they would have heard footsteps. My aunt said that while I was a baby, I would be staring at the air and giggling like I was watching someone and seemed to have a good time. She said I was probably playing with Casper. Anyways, my aunt had her boyfriend at the time over. She didn't tell him about the ghost simply because she'd forgot or it wasn't of significance in her life that much. So one night he stayed until late at night and told her he was going to go downstairs and get his jacket. He left and went to where he left his jacket, but apparently as he was looking in the direction of the room that had his jacket, he happened to be walking towards our old fish tank, which around the top of it had a mirror around it. He looked in the mirror and said that he almost screamed because all he saw in the mirror was a boy's face behind him. Mind you, I'm the only baby at the time and we have no boys in the family. So he grabbed his jacket and ran back upstairs to my aunt's room and she said she's never seen him so pale. She asked what's wrong and he kept saying he saw a boy's face in the mirror next to him. She calmly said that it was Casper and he's really nice, lol. Needless to say, he was very spooked that day. My grandma accidentally killed off Casper when she burned incense in the house and everyone was mortified when they got home and saw it happening, including my grandma who liked Casper. God damn it, grandma. He saved us electricity and closed the doors and that's how you repay him? I was on a three week summer course in college. I stayed in this dorm room that was actually pretty nice. On the first night there, I had a dream where this man and woman were asleep and then they were murdered. I don't remember how exactly, I didn't think much of the dream at first. On the same night, I dreamt of the man coming out of the mirror in my room all ghostly like. I have lots of extremely weird, hyper realistic dreams so I thought nothing about them. Starting the next night, I heard footsteps coming from above me, scary since I was on the top floor and there was no way onto the roof. Then on the second week, I'm just after getting into bed, rolled over to face the wall closed my eyes and this male voice whispered to me, Get up. I could feel his breath on my neck, so I jumped up as fast as humanly possible, lights on and searched my room from top to bottom, gripping a hurl as I did so. Why that seemed like a logical thing to do, I do not know. I then went and got my roommate just to see if she had anyone over. She understandably wasn't incredibly annoyed at being woken up at 3 or 4 a.m. About two or three days after that, I'm sitting in my room when the smoke alarm goes off and won't stop. Apparently it was faulty because the maintenance man couldn't see what was wrong with it and found it weird how it would just keep going and stop for a few seconds and start up again. After that, I only had the problem of my door randomly opening by the time I went to the kitchen and back. A few other people on my floor and the room below had some weird experiences but nothing I heard of as weird as mine. E.g., the girl who stayed in the room below me had no roommate and often heard knocking on her kitchen door in the middle of the night, which led to her asking to be moved due to a weird smell. Guess you can't tell the residential assistant that you think your room is haunted. I didn't live there, so not quite the answers you might be looking for, but I spent a lot of time growing up at my nan's house and some really weird shit went down, particularly in the years running up to when we had to sell it to pay for her care. The house isn't particularly old, not sure on the particulars, but I'd say that it was built sometime between 1930 and 1958 when my mom and her family moved in. The neighborhood the house is in used to be farmland and as far as I'm aware the only death to occur in the house was my grandfather. I only ever stayed the night at my nan's house once and refused to when the offer was presented. Normally at Christmas time my cousin would often sleep over but I always chickened out. I suppose that I must have been picking up on something subconsciously. The weird stuff started to kick off towards the last few years before my nan had to move into a care home, in hindsight, a similar time to when her dementia was really beginning to develop. There was a sort of weird vibe that settled over the house, particularly upstairs. It felt as if you were being watched if you went up there alone and not in a good way. If I had to use the bathroom, I'd run up and down the stairs wanting to spend as little time on my own upstairs as possible. I was lucky enough to not experience any worse in that house than the feeling of being watched and some footsteps, 
That'll come later, but my cousins were not so lucky. The house stayed in our possession for about two years before we sold it. During that time, one of my cousins, her ex-boyfriend, and one of their friends moved in. This was when things really started to get weird. My aunt, my mother's sister, and my oldest cousin would keep the front and back gardens maintained, and one afternoon my aunt was weeding in the front garden. The street that the house is on is pretty straight and long, and you can easily see if someone is moving around. She heard footsteps approach and a shadow overhead, so stopped to look up, thinking someone had stopped for a chat, perhaps one of the neighbors we knew. There was no one there, nor was there anyone remotely close to the house that could have caused it. Another two of my cousins had popped around to pick something up. My nan's house was a 10 minute walk from my aunt's and my cousins used the garage for storage. One of them had popped into the house for a drink and was sitting in the living room. The other was sorting through tools in the garage. My cousin saw a shadow person pass through the doorway from the kitchen into the living room. He refused to go into the house again after that. His twin sister who was living there experienced a lot whilst she was living there. The friend moved out after a little while, I'm not entirely sure why, and my cousin's ex-boyfriend was working on the night shift. For the first few months my cousin slept in what was my mum's room and had been woken up by the covers being pulled off of her and perfume bottles being moved around on the dressing table. It got to the point where she wouldn't sleep upstairs, instead sleeping on the sofa in the living room with the TV and lights on all night. She would regularly hear footsteps and unexplained knocking and her cat would react to things that my cousin couldn't see. She eventually moved back in with my aunt and uncle after an encounter with a shadow person, most likely the same one her twin encountered. She heard footsteps coming into the living room and saw the figure, spent the rest of the night awake with the duvet pulled over her head. She told me that she could sense the figure standing over her until morning. I have plenty more stories like these, particularly ones I've experienced myself, but most of them happened outside of my house, save for two. But as these happened in isolation, I don't think I would have described my house as being haunted. I remember when I was four years old, my mom and I were outside and she was raking leaves and tidying up our backyard. My mom had to go back inside to grab some trash bags so she could bag the leaves. She brought in the rake and pitchfork she was using and leaned them up against the wall in our laundry room. Our laundry room had a door that would lead out to the backyard and she told me she wanted me to stay inside while she bagged the leaves so I wouldn't get dirty. I was playing with my toys when suddenly I looked up and noticed that the pitchfork was freestanding all by itself at the other end of the room. Before I could make any sense of the freestanding pitchfork, it started moving toward me by itself in a fast paced stabbing motion. All I could do was keep crawling backwards so it would not hit me. Just when I was about to run out of room and most likely get stabbed with the fork, it quickly returned back to the place my mom originally placed it and then I saw my mom open the door and come back inside to get the rake and pitchfork. I was crying and told my mom that the pitchfork moved all on its own and tried to hurt me. My mom just told me I had imagined it and to calm down. I told my mom again that it did move and that she should throw it away. She told me to come back outside and she would show me that there was nothing to be scared of. I knew the pitchfork would not move again while my mom was with me because it only came after me when I was alone. This was the first of many paranormal occurrences that I have experienced in my 40 years of life. My father has a habit of pausing in what he was doing and watching whatever it is you're watching before continuing off on whatever it was that he was up to. So one time, I was just sitting alone in the living room, just watching TV, when I felt him doing his thing of walking up, pausing and having a look. I was like, yeah, there's nothing really on, as I flicked through the channels to show him. I didn't hear him walking away, though, so I turned around to see what he was up to, except I was alone in the room. It's not much of a ghost story, but the others I have about seeing a shadow person in my father's room as I walked down the hall, or seeing what looked like our family dog walking into a room at the far end of the corridor only to get there and find the room empty, or seeing a guy standing on the back porch watching me play with our puppy until I looked away and back and there was no one there. Those are all equally non-amazing stories. There's other stories from that house that I can recount only secondhand though, like when a guest was staying over and mentioned hearing someone walking up and down the front porch outside their room. 
but there being no one there. So my mother took a camera, stuck it out there, snapped a pic, and went on with life. Then, later, when the film was developed, there was a sort of misty pillar, approximately person-sized, in the pic. Or when my father heard someone tapping on the wall as they made their way down the corridor, like they were running their knuckles along the slats, which made up the covering, pausing on one side of his door, then continuing on the other side to the end, then coming back, pause, continue to the other side of the corridor, which could have been anyone living there, except for the fact that there's a standing bookcase, which the tapping continued along behind, there and back. I heard the tapping one night, many years later myself, or the time nothing in particular apparently grabbed the sheets and blankets from my father's bed and vigorously shook them up and down while he was in it. I have quite a few. I find ghosts, spirits, supernatural things very interesting. I feel like when you believe or spend any kind of time watching shows slash reading books about or even talking with people about these things, you're more susceptible to these things. I guess my first would have been in college. I had four roommates and we rented this really old three-story house in the middle of town by the university. The kitchen had three doors leading in and out of it. The only light switch in the kitchen was on the one side of the kitchen that didn't have a doorway. Sometimes you'd turn the light off, make it to the doorway, and it'd flip back on. This could be chalked up to the switch not being flipped down far enough and slipping back up, I suppose. The third story of this house was basically one big room with a little closet, almost like another tiny room to where you could fit three or four people in it, but the height of the closet was maybe four feet tall. There was a pool table up there, and we'd have a nice stereo system up there. One day I was home alone and bored, so I went upstairs to play some pool. As I was playing, I heard in a loud whisper, Hey! I thought maybe someone had come home, so I went down throughout the house, and no one was home. I went back upstairs and started playing again when I heard, Hey! Late to get up. I freaked out, ran down both stories and left the house until one of my other roommates returned. The last interesting one at this house was when I was lying in bed one night. Everything in my room was off and it was pitch black in there. All of a sudden, my printer turns on, not the computer, just the printer, and starts printing something. Freaked out and intrigued, I got up, turned on the light, and grabbed the piece of paper. In the top left-hand corner, in a tiny size, was a heart. Maybe wingdings or something. In my head, I was just like, well, at least the ghost loves me. There were several times where one roommate's TV or stereo would be found to turn itself on while they weren't home, or the stereo upstairs would randomly come on with the volume on it increasing and decreasing on its own. Next would be a place where my husband and I lived with our first child. I always sat my purse on the rail at the top of the stairs. One day, it forcefully flew down the stairs and landed about halfway down before rolling all the way down. Toys would roll back and forth across the carpeted living room floor. Our dog was always barking and staring at seemingly nothing. The next house we lived in was a two-story home that was fairly decent in size. The master bedroom and the bathroom were upstairs all by themselves, so that's where me and my husband's room was while the kids' rooms were downstairs. My kids and nieces always had a rule, theirs not mine, that you have to go to sleep by midnight or else you would hear someone walking around upstairs most of the night. I never really believed them, until one night I got off from work super late and didn't want to talk or walk all the way upstairs. I opted for the couch. I heard what sounded like a child running around upstairs, so I went up to see what was going on, only to find my husband dead asleep, no lights or TV on. This happened almost every night apparently, but you would never hear it if you were upstairs. One early morning, probably around 5 or 6 in the morning, I was laying on the couch with my kids, who were too little to be in school yet. As we were laying there, I heard what sounded like my big, heavy dresser fall over upstairs. I mean, it was the kind of loud that made you jump, and it shook the house, too. Terrified, and not wanting to scare the kids any more than they already were, I suggested we just go back to sleep for a while. When we woke up several hours later, and the kids were busy playing, I went upstairs to see what the damage was and dreading having to clean it up. When I went into my bedroom, everything was perfectly normal and in place. Sometimes my Siri would come on, 
when my phone was sitting across the room and I'd say, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. My husband heard something groan in his ear from over his shoulder once. Don't really miss living in those places, needless to say. I've told this story a few times on the net, but I'll repeat it. We, family of nine kids, two parents and pets, lived in a large bungalow here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Several freaky things happened to myself and to some of my sisters. The freakiest one for me was a repeat visitor of what has become to be called the Hat Man. Interestingly, when I first got on the net in the late 90s, I looked up Shadow Person because I didn't know what else to call it, and the entity that used to appear in my room was the Hat Man exactly. One particular night, when I was seven, the thing appeared outside my bedroom window. My sister, younger by a year, had her bed parallel to mine, with a doorway out of the room between us. So I see this thing, and without being able to make sense of it, it was now in my room and coming over to my bed. I lay down on my tummy, and I turned my head to look at my sister, who said, Don't let him get you. I turned my head and could see him coming to lean over me with something in his hand. The thing is, it was entirely black and huge. It was like you could see nothing but dark black. I turned my head to face the wall as I noticed his hand coming down toward me. No shit. I felt something poke my shoulder three times. I have no recollection of how this particular night horror ended. Just remember waking up the next morning. There's heaps more freaky stories about this particular house, but I'll wind it up by saying that we moved out of Christchurch when I was 10 years old. At the age of 21, I moved back to Christchurch. I had moved into a house in the inner city and shared it with a girl that just happened to have grown up in the same suburb as me. We got to talking about the house and she said, did you say you lived in E Road? And I said, yes, that's right. She asked me, it wasn't number 56, was it? And I said, yeah, how on earth did you know that? To which she responded, everyone knew that house was haunted. <laughs> 